Last Friday, our very own Mary-Kate Harrion gave us an in-depth look at the life of Chris Street. And now DITV's Lucy Rodin will show us the impact he still has. 14,822. That's how many people packed into Carver Hawkeye Arena to remember a fallen Hawkeye at the Chris Street Memorial Game. I appreciate them coming out, first of all, to support the Street family. You know, so many of our guys came back, you know, our lettermen and you know, some of Chris's teammates, obviously. And it's great to have Coach Davis here. It means a lot to us. I think it definitely adds to it, you know, understanding the significance of today's game um, and honoring Chris Street um, and just, you know, really unfortunate we didn't play our best basketball today. In the midst of a disappointing season where Iowa lost on Saturday by 23 points, Chris Street came back to remind us that at the end of the day, there are things bigger than basketball. Can't describe it. I, I, you know, people ask me why, you know, why. I said, well, you tell me why. I, I don't know. I, I think it was just, he was genuine. He loved the game. He was a hard worker. And he was sincere at it. And that's the only thing I can, I can point to. But I don't just attribute to him and what, how his mother raised him. It was really emotional talking with Chris Street's parents. I'm pretty close with them. I talked to them last night and a bunch of the former players and how much Chris meant to this community and this, really the entire state. Mike Street said that if Chris was able to witness the love and support 25 years later, all he would have to say would be Go Hawks. Reporting from inside Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Lucy Rodine, DI TV Sports. Definitely a very emotional experience for everyone at the game on Saturday. Now the Iowa basketball team has another chance to redeem themselves tonight and our very own Mary-Kate Harrion and Adam Hensley are standing by to give you guys all you need to know. Guys? All right, thanks guys. I'm really excited to welcome in the sports editor of the Daily Iowa and over to the TV studio to give us a little bit of a different perspective than we may be used to hearing this season. So Adam, really excited to have you here. Iowa has another big matchup tonight, just in the sense that they need a win here. Not really that Wisconsin is the team that people are used to seeing as they have gone far in the tournament the last couple of years. But before we move on to looking at their matchup tonight, we've kind of witnessed an opposite season than most were thinking, especially I think me and you were thinking with the amount of talent they have. But again, like I said, since day one, this team is so young. Oh, yeah. And I think what's really stuck out this year is just the fact that Peter Jock's no longer with mm -hmm. the team. And last year, he kind of served as that shot creator, this go-to scorer when they were in a little bit of a run or something like that, could easily get a bucket for you. Mm -hmm. And he really opened up the floor for guys like Jordan Bohannon and Tyler Cook. And yeah. I think you're really seeing a product of Jock not being there this year because Cook and Bohannon are facing a lot of double teams. Yeah, just the lack of maturity on that team as well is definitely hurting them. But yeah. let's talk about Purdue. Not a fun game to watch. At all, Garza was probably their only bright spot in my mind, but you cannot give up 23s and then go on and win a game. Oh, yeah, no. Iowa's defense was, like, almost not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was the three-point line was wide open for yeah. Purdue, guys coming off screens, but Iowa's offense did not help them out at all. I mean, when you shoot that poorly, especially in the first half, and then you're down by 37 at one point, it's just really hard to get back into a game. All right, so now moving on to tonight, you and I talked about earlier a little bit how both of these teams' rosters are very young, but they're also having the same kind of season here as well. Oh, yeah. I think with Wisconsin, they lost a lot of guys to graduation. Mm -hmm. um, obviously more than Iowa did because yeah. Iowa just lost Jock. But they still have Ethan Happ, and he's mm -hmm. a beast down low in the paint. He's a great big man. Yeah. But a lot of Wisconsin's production comes from underclassmen this year. Yeah. All right, so give me one thing people should look out for during the game tonight. Well, I'm really looking forward to the matchup between Tyler Cook and Ethan Happ mm -hmm. because both are very skilled big men, yeah. kind of in their own separate ways. But I, whether or not they're guarding each other and going one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's just going to be a really good like, low post showcase tomorrow night on a national level. All right, one key for the Hawkeyes to get this win. Iowa needs to be able to counter when teams go on a run. Yeah, because absolutely. especially in Big Ten play this year, Iowa has really struggled when they fall behind in like a 12-0 or 20-something mm -hmm. run. And they really got to be able to counter back and just punch back. They did that against Illinois and they came out with the win, but mm -hmm. aside from that game, they really have not showed that they can do that this year. Yeah, my key is going to be, I said this on Friday before Purdue, but obviously it didn't work, offensive consistency. We finally have seen Bohannon kind of get back in his groove here after his rough first patch of the season. Cook's always that guy that you can always have, you know, he'll score double digits plus every game. Yeah. And then but you guys, you got the rest of the guys. Garza had played phenomenal against Purdue, but then you have other games where he can't seem to find his rhythm on the court. So I think that's going to be the separation between the two. So we will see what happens with that. I'm going to go with the win. I think they're due. 
Um, I think they're going to come ready to play inside of Carver. They have to win. It's getting to the point now you got against U of I, and that's it. So I'm taking the win. What are you taking? See, I'm not as optimistic as you okay. are. I'm Unfortunately, I'm going with the batters for this one okay. just after that Purdue game. Okay. Well, I'm normally right, so you're probably wrong, but that is it for us. Tip-off is at 6 p.m. inside of Carver Hawkeye Arena and will be broadcast on ESPN2. Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Mary-Kate. We'll have highlights from that game in tomorrow morning's show. That's all I have in the sports studio. Come back tomorrow as I give you an in-depth look at the emotional reunion between an Iowa gymnast and her family. Guys, back over to you.